the Upanishad series integral part not the intellectual one integral part not the intellectual one there is a question is there an intellectual path to enlightenment is there intellectual path to enlightenment first of all there is no path the very idea of path is fallacious as you walk your walking creates the path and the path that you travel on is your path the path naturally leads you away from the path it takes you from this to that from here to there from now to then this is how all paths lead there is no need for any path for enlightenment because enlightenment happens when you are be now and then you are integrated within the path will certainly be a distraction and for that matter all paths are distractions follow any path and you will be following the wrong and there is no path that indeed you can call as the right path try to understand this deeply that there are no right paths paths has such a wrong to be on a path is to be on the wrong path going in the wrong direction and in fact you are going away and away from yourself not really but in desire in dreams that is why all paths all religions have become an obstruction they are all paths to be a path it is needed that god should be far away the farther the better because then the path can be created paths like christianity hinduism islam sufism and buddhism can be created god has to be really far away so far away that path is never ending and the priest can go on exploiting there is a russian writer dostoevsky he mentions of a parable in his novel brothers karamazov jesus comes back after 1800 years to see how things are going and he thinks things must be going beautiful now 
because almost half of the world is Christian now. He appears in the marketplace of Bethlehem, where he was originally born. People surrounded him, they laughed, joked at him, and mocked. All this made Jesus a little embarrassed. What is the matter? Why are the people laughing? Jesus thought. And he asked, and they said, You look like Jesus. You have almost succeeded in looking like him. And he said, But I am Jesus. And they laughed even louder. And they say, Whatsoever, whosoever you are, either you are a pretender or you are a madman. Therefore, escape from him. If the priest comes to know, you will be in difficulty. And it is Sunday. Sunday morning, Jesus must have chosen Sunday and the people were coming out of the church, but he remains there under the tree waiting for the priest to come. He thinks if, we, if ordinary people cannot recognize me, at least my priest will recognize me. And then comes the priest. And he is so angry, indeed angry the same way as Jewish rabbis had been 1800 years before. And he pulls Jesus down and tells the people to take him into the church. This man seems to be either mad or dangerous, certainly a pretender. Jesus could not believe his eyes. My own priest, who had just a few minutes before been preaching my words and now behaving differently, it seems strange, Jesus thought. And the same drama is happening again, something that happened 1800 years ago. And he started feeling as if he is going to be crucified again. The priest takes him inside, locks him into the small cell, and he wanders sitting there. Now what is going to happen? And what type of Christian are these people? If they cannot recognize me, then whom are they going to recognize? And they have been waiting for me and continuously praying for me to come back because we need you. And now I am here, and it seems to be unbelievable. All those people who go on preaching on a day-to-day -day basis and giving you sermon, look, Jesus is coming, and if Jesus comes, this is what they are going to do to him. The whole day he remains locked in the cell, in the middle of the night comes the priest with a lamp and the priest touches the feet of Christ and says, I recognize you, Master, but I cannot recognize you in the marketplace. Your presence in the, mas in the marketplace is dangerous. You are not needed anymore. We are doing your job so perfectly well and you are a great disturbance as you have 
always been and now you have seen. Your presence has created a turmoil. You need not come. We are taking care of your business here and everything has settled with great difficulty and your presence, your coming back will unsettle and destroy everything that we have done down these 1800 centuries. Down these 18 centuries, it has been an arduous journey, but now we are established. The whole earth belongs to us. Almost. Every town has a church and millions of missionaries and priests are roaming around the world, converting everybody to Christianity. Sooner or later, by the end of this century, we will have converted the whole earth. You need not come because you are a disturber, an ancient disturber. You will start saying dangerous things again and all efforts will be undone again. Certainly I recognize you in the darkness of the night, but in the morning before people, I cannot recognize you. You better escape, otherwise I will have to crucify you this time. Jesus Christ is certainly dangerous to the priest. And so is Muhammad to a Muslim priest. And so is Krishna to a Hindu priest. Because then the priest is not needed at all. Neither the Hindu, nor Christian, nor Muslim priest is not needed. The meditator All mediators are not needed. When Christ is standing by your side, there is no need for anyone to become a link between you and Christ. God has to be far away, indeed very far away. Only then the priest can play the role of becoming a messenger to you that it is he who brings the message of God to you, so he can become the bridge between you and God. That is how all paths are. All paths are created by the priest. Buddhas have not given any path. They have given an understanding to you that there is no need to go anywhere. You just remain silent where you are. You just be in and all is available to you. This is religion of meditation. Indeed, religion without apparent God. God is not outside. He is your innerness. He is your inside. God is not an object. He is your subjectivity. God is you. So, where are you going? What path is needed? No path is needed. And no path is the right one. The word, the Hindi word Bhagwan we use for, as synonym for God, it is wrong. This word Bhagwan has four letters and one vowel, and that corresponds to 
five basic elements of which the human body is composed of. The first letter starts with B. Bha. Bha is the first letter for the Hindi word Bhumi. Bhumi means the earth element. This is the first element of which the human body is composed of. After that comes G. G. G refers to Gagan. Gagan means the sky element, the ether. Then comes Wa. Wa refers to, out of this comes also Vayu, the air element. So the earth, the sky or ether and the air, three elements. Now, in order to make the word soft word Wa, a vowel is used to make it a long sound. Wow. That long sound is the sound of English letter A or Hindi letter A. From A comes Agni the fire. So the earth, the sky, the air, the fire. These four elements have Come on, Rajin. Now the fifth element, the last letter of the word Bhagwan is Na. From Na comes Neer or water. So the earth, the sky or the ether, the air, the fire, the water, these are the five elements of which the human body is composed of. Then these have their subtle elements. Kabir says man is 20 and his consciousness is 21. And the moment you are complete 21, you don't need anything else. So when Osho for the first time used the word Bhagwan for this Sannyasins to address him, the ignorant priestly community made a big hue and cry saying that he is claiming himself to be as God. Because traditionally the word Bhagwan is considered as synonym with English word God, which is not. One who is composed of these five elements is Bhagavan. This is how the creation comes. Now your journey begins. You are made as a humus, made out of the body is humus. And this humus comes into existence from five elements. The earth, the sky, the e or ether, the air, the fire, the water. This makes the matter. But the matter has its subtle elements also. According to Veda, it says Matra, Tanmatra, and it goes on like that, adding in multiples of five. After it becomes twenty, then comes the element which is never born, never dies. The moment that comes in, you are the part of the ocean. You are one with the ocean. And that's why Osho has dropped all the names and became Osho, one who is ocean. Everything has dissolved into oneness. Therefore, first of all, there is no path, and second, God cannot be recognized and realized by any of your so called paths. God can only be realized through your totality.
the moment you are totally integrated with him then you can recognize that which is according to yoga system it is known as gyan yoga the path of knowledge then there are emotional paths the bhakti yoga the path of devotion and there are paths of action karma man has three layers in his being knowing feeling and doing now these three paths are involved because of these three layers in man's being there are those to whom bhakti is spontaneous those who are action oriented and those who are knowledge oriented intellect can know but cannot feel intellect can know but cannot feel emotions can feel but cannot know actions can do but can neither know nor feel knowledge is incomplete because it cannot feel cannot do man is this triangle action knowledge and feeling and they are they all have to be integrated together in one unity only then you can know what god is what god is is not only has man divided man instead he has divided god to god the father god the son god the holy ghost and in hindu mythology there is trinity the three faces of god god has no face but it has been given faces god is facelessness god has no form how can he have a form god is not three gods in one even to say god is one is not right because one creates the idea of two and two creates the idea of three and so on and so forth the journey continues god simply is neither one nor three neither one nor many god is simple isness and when you are in your isness you are god remember you do not come to see god and also you do not encounter god you do not come to realize that this is god when you come to god you are one god is not something outside instead it is your innermost core the center of the cycle in your very innermost so there is no path in the first place and there is no intellectual or emotional any or any other kind that you can call path there is no path you have to become a totality or integrity in that very totality you become divine intellectual can go on and on analyzing it is very dry and insipid it is analysis it is logic and it cannot feel through intellect science is born that is why science cannot say god is science has to deny it at the most create hypothesis that denial 
comes because of the presuppositions, assumptions and priori conclusions. Because science believes only in reason and it believes in a very detached reason. Your feelings should not come into it. You should remain aloof, detached and indifferent to whatsoever you are looking at. You should be just an observer with no feeling. Your heart should not beat. Your knowledge should be devout of all feelings. Naturally, science stumbles upon matter. Not that only matter is. Science stumbles upon matter because of its methodology. The methodology is such that con consciousness cannot be caught hold of. Consciousness is excluded from the very beginning. The method excludes it. For example, you start for example, if you start seeing through the ears, suppose if it happens, then you will stumble upon only sounds. You will not come to see flowers and colors and remain not see all this. And sooner or later you will conclude that only sound exists. There are no flowers and there, is, there are no colors either. Logic has given birth to science. Love has given birth to religions. The religions of yesterday the religions which are no more relevant, they were as partial as science. That is why there was so much conflict between science and religion. Certainly the conflict was not accidental. The conflict was of methodology. Religion was basically emotional or feeling. Logic was denied. Reason was prohibited. Tears were okay. Prayers were okay. But no intellect was allowed. Intellect was considered as enemy. So when science started growing, it was natural that the church and the religion, religious people would be in conflict with it. And that conflict continued. The religion of yesterday was as partial as today's science. Nobody has ever been able to see human being in its totality. And that moment has come. Now man is no more childish. The moment has come. The moment for the idea. The idea of totality to be accepted has come. And when, and when the moment has come, for some idea comes, then nothing can prevent it. All partial efforts have failed. And politics too has failed. The East has suffered because it learned too much towards the feeling part. Hence there is poverty and misery because science could not be introduced and was not allowed to grow. This is the reason. And without science there is going to be continuous poverty. Thousands and one problems on the material plane exist and the West has developed technology, the poverty has disappeared, many illnesses too have disappeared, and it has been a blessing. But on the other hand, 
man has also disappeared. The man has turned into a machine. The heart is no more functioning. Love knows no more. The juice of feelings has dried up and man is becoming a desert man. Man is feeling meaningless and is very close to committing suicide. Individuals have been committing suicide and their number grows every day and sooner or later if balance is not brought, if partiality is not dropped and totality is not brought, there is every possibility that man may commit a global suicide. There is a great preparation. Love has dis disappeared from the West as logic has dis disappeared from the East. This is a lopsided situation. The integrated approach is that of totality, the wholeness, and whatsoever is whole becomes virtually holy as well. With me, you have to learn this too. You have to learn oneness. You are not here to choose one. You are here to choose the totality, the wholeness. You have to be a whole man, a total. Nothing should be rejected and nothing should be whatsoever. You should be whatsoever you are with great acceptance. It is difficult to accept all. Because if you accept logic, then it becomes contradictory to accept love. If you accept love, then it feels difficult to accept logic. But what can you do? This is how things are. It is not a question of choice. It is how you are made. This is how the existence functions. For the first time, when the scientists were working on atom, they were confused. It acts like a wave and at the same time, so when Albert Einstein was asked, it acts both as logic and illogic. He said, what can I do? This is how it is. Existence is paradoxical and man has been carrying a very foolish idea that he has to be non-paradoxical. So when he chooses intellect, he destroys feeling because feelings does not fit in the realm of intellect. But what is the need to fit? Or when he chooses feeling, he becomes antagonistic to logic and reason. He becomes superstitious because then he feels afraid that if logic comes in, then what will happen to faith? The, then the faith will be destroyed. Certainly there is no need to feel afraid. You can accept all and be total. And remember this totality is beautiful. Zara thamne do gautam ke sadhe paon. Zara thamne do gautam ke sadhe paon. Or zara zara mina ko. Zara Mira ko Dhyan Lakne do Totality is beautiful Just one thing has to be understood that life is paradoxical 
life is richer the more paradoxical you are if you can contain contradictions can you imagine your vastness if you can contain contradictions you will have variety you will have multiplicity in you you will have all dimensions in you and you will be the birth of a real man a new man out of you man has yet to come and is still remain an unfulfilled promise we are just stumbling and groping for the new man to come man is not yet born you are in the womb hence there is so much anxiety and it seems the moment of birth is very close and this is individual each individual birth is individual hence there is so much crisis for the first time man is going to be born man in the sense of totality in the sense of paradoxicalness in the sense of vastness that contains all contradictions in its own a man should be a poet a lover and a rational and at the same time he should be active all the three dimensions the gyan yog the bhakti yog the karma yog should be embedded in him a man should be ill and there is no problem in it for him to be in fact if there is logic and love both logic will support love and love will support logic your logic will never go dry the juice of love will keep it green and alive and fresh it will have its green and red and the gold and if reason is there your love will never become insanity it will retain a certain quality of reason it will not take you to the extreme you will remain in the middle and you will remain balanced and symmetrical never think of intellectual path emotional path or the path of karma in their separation wholeness totality is required nothing else than will do you have to take the risk of being total and that totality is the very essence 